Watkins teaching for Kyra Studios. And this whole month of January, we're going through just simple stretches to make sure that you stay healthy and aligned and you don't feel like you have to do all the things to like maximize your health and then you burn out really quickly. I'd rather you just start small and be consistent than worry about doing all the things. So you're gonna come to your hands and knees and if you have trouble with your wrist, make a fist and keep that wrist line really straight and do everything on your fist or come to your forearms, right? You have options. Pad up your knees if your knees are sensitive and you're gonna start with a cat cow. So you're gonna press into your hands, press into your shins and you're gonna round your back and noticing where your spine likes to move and where it doesn't like to move. And then you're gonna inhale and you're gonna go the other way. Lifting the tail and the head up. And again, noticing where you move and where you don't move. One more like that, pressing and rounding. And then going the other way. And then find a happy medium. From there, you're gonna to come to rest on your side because we're gonna do a little before and after. So, you're going to lay on your side with your arms out in front of you, stack the palms, and you're just going to slide the top arm forward. Now, if it pulls too much in your neck or your shoulders are really broad, pat up your head. So, you're going to slide the top arm forward, rotating, stretching now. Then, you're going to arc your top arm up and overhead, breathing as you do this. And open it back, and I'm rolling on my ribs. Open your arm back and out to the side. Then reach your arm back overhead, stretching, arcing it back to stacked in front of you. You're going to do that two more times. Reach forward with the top arm, overhead as you breathe. Open that arm out. Stretch, let your ribs go. My head is kind of following the direction of my hand and then come back around. Maybe this is too much pull in your shoulder. Bend the elbow, shorten the lever basically, and bring your fingertips to your hand. Fingertips to your shoulder. <laughs> Not fingertips to hand, but fingertips to your shoulder and you would just kind of do it as best you could from your elbow rather than your hand. So you reach forward, you arc overhead, and back behind you. Because a lot of us have shoulder injuries and strains. Just hold with this arm opened out behind you. And I want you to take your top leg and kind of cross it over your bottom leg and kind of hook it around so that your bottom leg starts to pull the top leg. Breathe there and release. I notice as I pull my leg, it pulls me and starts to roll my shoulders forward. So I'm going to try and let that go. Lengthen my throat and my neck. And then from there, I'm going to uncross my legs and I'm going to roll over onto my back. And the same side that you were just moving the arm, I want you to take that leg in towards your chest. And I want you to grab the sole of the foot on one side, but flex the foot so you're not going to be like pointing or sickling the ankle. You're going to flex and hold the foot in a very neutral alignment. And then you're going to grab the knee with the other hand. Keep the foot flexed as you bring the foot closer towards you, towards the shoulder. And then the other hand has the knee and the thigh, and you're going to kind of push that away. Then you're going to see if you can pull the foot and the leg kind of closer into your chest. Now, sometimes we do this with the bottom leg pushing that ankle, and you can certainly do this. But I want you to see if you can let your ribs, your back, your butt relax on the mat as you do this. And if you have the mobility for it, you can take your elbow and your sole of your foot together and your elbow and your knee on the other side, you can clasp your hands and pull that leg in closer. Now, this may not be an option, right? You might be grabbing the foot and the knee and bring the other leg up and it might look really like it's way far away from you, but it feels really tight and that is okay. All I want you to do is go where you can go and breathe and try and let your tail relax. Because a lot of times we hit a stretch, we stop breathing, our tail curls in and we're like, ah, I can't do this. So go, like back off a little bit, breathe, then see if you can release and coax your body into just a little bit more. All right, when you're ready, you're going to uncross the leg 
and then you're gonna roll to the other side for the arm, right? So you'll roll over to the other side, reaching the arms forward, overhead, and back. Remember to bend the elbow, fingertips on your shoulder if you need to, and then you go back overhead and forward. Reach forward, overhead, and back. Overhead and forward. One more. Forward, overhead, and back. And you're going to hold. And you cross the top leg under the bottom leg and kind of pull with the bottom leg to pull that top leg as you try and release into the spiral of your ribs, really. So you're trying to get your ribs to twist as your pelvis slowly gets pulled a little, a little more square. Breathing there. And then you're gonna slowly uncross your legs and roll to your back. You're going to bring that leg up, flex the foot, keeping the ankle flexed and neutral. Bring the foot across your body, knee opens to the side. Use your hands to help facilitate that movement. Your bottom leg can come up and prop that leg up if you need to. Or you might be mobile enough to bring the leg in close and your legs, excuse me, your arms wrap around that leg, interlacing the hands, right? And from here, you know, you can press that leg away from you even though you're pulling it in. You can do that even with the leg crossed, right? You can do both of those things. And all I want you to do is find the place that's right for you that you can still breathe. Your neck and shoulders aren't taking tension. So you might find that you're like, all the way up. So what you would do if it's pulling your neck and shoulders is pat up your head, right? Make it easy for yourself because that's how you're going to make those slow changes. You're going to make those changes, but it's going to be incremental and it's going to take time. You know, we have a lifetime of patterns in our body. It's not going to stop in one day, <laughs> right? And then when you're ready, you bring the legs down and you uncross them. All right, so you're gonna come back up to sitting and go back to the hands and knees position. You're gonna try cat-cow again and see if it feels any different. So you're gonna press into your hands and you're gonna round and you're going to stay there. And all I want you to do when you're round, whether you're on your hands, your fists, or your forearms, is shift weight back towards your feet and forward towards your arms. And do that one more time. You're still rounded back towards your feet forward towards your arms, then find a happy medium and go the other way into extension, sending your chest and your head out and up, not just your chin up, but your whole chest and head, tail up, and do the same thing. Shift a little forward and back, and then find center, and just tuck your toes, keep center, and lift your knees up, Keep your knees bent as you push through your hands, butt goes up and back, knees stay bent, and just do a little running in place through your feet. Pressing with your hands to shift the weight back towards your feet, and then bend your knees and come all the way down. You could rest in a child's pose here, and then you could sort of side stretch, you could do a little like arm swing, whatever feels good to you to kind of balance out. You could also just walk your hands up, come up to standing, go get a snack, whatever you need. All right, we hope you take care. I'm, again, I'm Nicole Watkins, teaching for Kyra Studios. We hope you stay strong, stay healthy, and stay home.